I'm Jake, and this is the full release of Baldur's Gate 3. So, not a whole lot different. From, not a whole lot different from what we uh, saw in the pre-release of the game. The only new character truly is the Dark Urge, which is someone we haven't seen before. Uh, Karlak, I guess, was one of the NPCs from a quest, actually kind of a short one, um, before the game came out. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think we're going to start with a custom character, just because it's more fun that way, in my opinion. We don't have to deal with any story that they've had. We can kind of have our own. Now, when it comes to character creation, all of these features kind of come into play in terms of how powerful your character is going to be. But I think one thing people overblow about D&D is trying to min-max and trying to be the most powerful version of a character that they can come up with. The game isn't just about trying to beat it. The game is about really accepting both the successes and the failures and seeing how that changes the story. So... You're going to see tons of articles. You're going to see a bunch of people talking about, here's the best build for Sorcerer. Here's the best build for this and that and all the rest of it. My advice would be ignore it the first time or two through. Unless you're really trying to break the game and just see how much damage you can do or see how easy it can be. Um, I would just say play the game as a character that you like and one that you want to see. So I think for this one, we're going to go a little bit more ridiculous. We're going to go make a halfling barbarian, I think. And again... We don't really get a whole lot of bonuses from being a halfling uh, in terms of leveling up our strength, which is our main stat for being a barbarian. We're just going to roll with it and, you know, enjoy it for what it is, I think. Again, it's all about the stories you want to tell versus anything else. Now, they have changed the interface a little bit. We're going to mess with our appearance here. We will be a male. Where to next? Hmm. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Uh, that doesn't sound very barbarian-like. Pal, be wary. This place is trapped. I don't know about that. More of those wretched things. Well, I don't really feel like we have a ton of... What do we got here? Okay, there we go. That does not look like a barbarian. Look at his face. <laughs> That looks a little bit closer to a barbarian. That looks a little bit rougher. Uh, let's mess with our scars here as we move in. We want this guy to have seen some action, right? Uh, that doesn't look super realistic unless he gave him to himself. Let's go with something like... Let's go with something like that. That's pretty beat up, right? Barbarians, they're mainly your tanks. Uh, we'll go through the characters really quick just in case, too. Or the uh, character types. Not worried about him being old. We'll keep him young. Freckle quantity. Not really worried about freckles. They do have a ton of options, which I like. All right. 
we'll go back to our character. So, in terms of classes, let's start with classes. Realistically, this should be what you're picking first. I'm not sure why they have it after race and sub-race, because at least in the 5e rules, which this entire game is based on, uh, you're going to have a bunch of differences between the races, what bonuses you get, and it'll tell you maybe here on the side somewhere. Again, I think for having... Um, for having this interface, they're not doing a great job of... I do like the changes, I think it looks good, but I don't think they're doing a great job of showing you exactly what each race gives you. He says, well, we have our features here, but these are just what you what you get feature-wise. Here's closer to where it is. The stealth... Uh, let's see. No, because it should be telling you what stats get leveled and, and get grow higher because of the class that you took. I think we're going to have to probably be... And that messed up my character, too. Hmm. We'll just be a Lightfoot Halfling. It doesn't fit, but that's why we're picking it. Uh, oh, okay. We got more over here on the side. So let's mess with that a little bit. Do we want to go with the full face paint? I think we have to in terms of having a Barbarian. We got to go with something here. are a ton of options. I like that. Mm, that's a little more warlocky. I do like that one. I think that's a, a decent coloring. Decent kind of shape for something like a barbarian might paint on himself. We'll go with that. Eyes. Uh make this character somewhat of a reflection of me even though, uh, you know we can go any direction we want with it. We'll go with the eyes Do we put makeup on the eyes? Probably if something fits with the, the face paint uh, I think that looked pretty good We'll go with our hair Let's go with something wild. Really show off our barbarian uh, kind of traits How's that look? Uh, that's not bad. Kind of got a Viking thing going on here. Doesn't really fit because we're three foot tall, but you know, that's what part, part of what makes it fun. Mm. How about this Mohawk? Uh, I kind of like that. It's not bad. I think we're down between these two. Either this one, or we go with this. We'll go with this. That's that's a little more barbarian. I like like the wolf tail thing we got going on. Hair color. Right. That highlights. Is that makeup wise? I think that's probably makeup wise. I don't know. Okay. that. Facial hair. Go with the full Viking beard. What do you think? I think we got to. Yeah, the chops don't really fit. Just the mustache is out of place. Uh, I guess we'll go full. We'll go full Viking here. We'll go with that. All right. Uh, we'll go back to edit our character, our background. We'll run through the classes really quick, just in case you're trying to decide for anything. Uh, barbarians are basically the best tank in the game, I would argue, or one of the best tanks. Their rage um, mechanic kind of makes it where you can half a lot of the incoming damage and make it where you don't take as much. Bards are casters that are charisma-based. They're not terrible. Um, they're just not as good as some of the other ones. Like, I think if you want to make a charisma-based caster... Unless you're going for a certain type of aesthetic, I think the Sorcerer is probably better. Uh, clerics are good healers, but because Shadowheart's a cleric, we're probably going to use her a lot for that. Uh, they're great support characters, and they do some damage. You know, D&D does a pretty good job of bringing the cleric into more than just the healer role. Uh, druids can wild shape, which is interesting. Changing into a bunch of them, uh, a bunch of different animals, is helpful and always pretty cool. They can be tanks as well. Um, I just don't think we're going to go with Druid this time. Fighter, it sounds basic, it is a little basic, but there are interesting 
parts of it, and you get extra stats compared to everybody else. Um, fighters are just solid all-around upfront helpers, whereas the Barbarian can be a damage dealer, he can be a tank, he can do... I, I just think the Barbarian has a little bit more tanking ability than something like a fighter, and Lazelle is a fighter as, too, as well, so if we want one, we can have one in the party. Monks, cool, don't always fit every setting. Um, they're not a bad class, they're just... How do, how do I say it? They're underpowered compared to everybody else. There's not a lot of good monk subclasses, so unless the game m messed with a bunch of stuff in 5e, which I don't think is probably very likely, then the monk is probably going to be a little bit weaker than these other classes. Uh, Paladin's a great damage dealer, especially early. Like, until you hit level 6 or 7, the Paladin is going to be one of the most powerful classes you can have because you get to smite, where you get to add an extra 2d8 to all your attacks of just, like, holy damage. Uh, they're strong. There are, one of their downsides is they need multiple skills. Like, uh, basically, as a barbarian, we need strength and we need some constitution. The rest of it's just kind of gravy. If you're a paladin, you need strength or dexterity. You need constitution. You need charisma. Uh, you know, you just need to level up a bunch of stuff. And unfortunately, in 5e, you don't get a lot of options to increase your stats. So, unless the game has some certain mechanics that, uh, you know, I don't know about to boost your stats up you're probably not going to be able to um, make a very effective paladin because you can use the standard the standard array. Uh, you can always get by. You can always just lean into just doing strength and having charisma be a little bit lower so some of your spells are a little bit weaker. But again, they, they I, I think the paladin suffers from the standard array because it's really hard to level your stats in this game. Rangers like Monk, where it's not super powerful. Uh, you know, if you want to play a ranger... There's an old saying that the fighter is a better ranger than the ranger. So there are a couple interesting uh, subclasses, and you get some spells. But all in all, the ranger is not overly powerful. Rogues are very powerful. Asterion is one, so we won't necessarily take one this time. Uh, they kind of hide a lot. They go in and out of combat, so it can keep them from taking damage. They have other things like evasion at level 7 that comes into play uh, that keeps them from taking damage. But um, yeah, they're great to have, but because we get one... I don't know that we'll necessarily take it this time. Uh, sorcerer's a great... Sorcerer and Wizard are pretty similar classes, actually. The Wizard leans on Intelligence, where the Sorcerer focuses on using Charisma instead. But they have a lot of similar spells. You get a couple different advantages as a Sorcerer, getting meta magic and other things that come into play. But um, I think between the two of them, the Wizard's probably more powerful. So unless you need a character to be the voice of your party, uh, you don't necessarily have to take a Sorcerer. And Warlocks are interesting... Their mechanics are different from the Sorcerer and the Wizard because they get their spells back on short rests instead of long rests. Um, but because long resting doesn't really seem to be too much of a problem in this game, I think we're just going to... Uh, I, I don't think you really have to lean into the Warlock too much. I think you can make a choice. Also, Will has been a Warlock. I know they said they changed him a lot. I'm interested, interested to see if they changed his class, but I doubt it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if you're looking to pick one of these classes, all of them are good. Don't if you want to play a monk, if you want to play a ranger, I know they said they weren't quite as good as some of the other classes. Just play what you want to play. Um, again, don't worry about stats too much. The game is balanced enough to the point where any of these classes can be successful, and it's not always about succeeding every time. It's, you know, failure can change the game to the point where something unexpected happens, and uh, that's what you have to react to, and it just changes the story. So play what you want to play. Just make fun characters, and uh, yeah, go with that. So, background doesn't change a whole lot. It gives you some different skills to start. Um, none of these really fit. Maybe Outlander probably fits the best. Maybe Folk Hero. Uh, you get Athletic and Survival automatically. You get Proficiency in those, if that's what we take. Folk Hero uh, gets Animal Handling and Survival, which are admittedly probably less useful. Animal Handling is never a bad thing, but it's a little more niche. Um... I imagine it'll come up some in this, just from what I've played already. But I think we're going to go with Outlander, because that'll free us up to pick some different things. We'll go into our abilities, and this is actually... Um, I did call it Standard Array. It's actually Point Buy, which is good. And they changed the bonuses. That's probably why they have the race listed first, where in the previous version of the game, uh, your race would give you a, spe a specific set of bonuses. Like, you get a plus two and a plus one, but you wouldn't get to pick. I think it's good that they have it where you can just decide what you're going to increase. And we do definitely want to focus on strength here. We're going to be a strength build. Um, 
you could certainly make a dexterity build for pretty much anybody because dexterity does everything strength does and gives you a bunch of other advantages too. So if you want to lean into dex, you could definitely could do that. I think we'll pass on it. We'll keep it high if we can. Yeah, we can't go below eight because I would dump intelligence if I could. Let's drop wisdom by a couple points. Can we go above 17? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so we can't get it. We can't get an 18. Doesn't look like we can boost past 15. Uh, Charisma is not overly important. Intimidation is something that we want to have, and it's unfortunate that it does rely on charisma, because you know we want to be an intimidating barbarian, right? We want to go up to people and force them to do what we want because we're scary. So it is also slated, which is good. So the higher you go here, it takes more ability points to give above 16, or 15. If we get to 16, we actually increase the stats, which is important. So I think we'll go with that, that build. And I just want to make sure we can't get all the way up on strength. Yeah, it doesn't look like we can, even if we wanted to. We do this. So we'll go 16 here, we'll go 13 there. And it's important to remember when you're leveling your stats, they always level up on even numbers. So we'll have a plus three here, plus three here, plus uh, two, uh, yeah, plus two here, no, plus one here, which is not significantly great. And everything else will be zeros and a minus one. All right. Um, I'd say that's pretty good. I think we're in good shape here, and we'll get started with uh, our bite-sized barbarian. What do we name him? Uh, let's go. We'll go bite-sized. Bill. All right. You need to guard him. Choose one. Uh, okay. Um, last time I just made this the most ridiculous thing that I could. <laughs> and... It is always kind of funny, but I, you know, this is our first playthrough. Let's take it serious. Let's we'll go with another halfling. Uh, let's randomize it. A couple. Oh, it says random. It means random. We'll go with that. I think that's good enough. We'll get into this. I don't think these are going to change too much, but I'll shut up while the cutscenes are playing. Red Dragon Riders coming in to uh, fight their nemesis, the uh, the Mind Flayers, which is a giant floating squid ship. I hope he packed Feather Ball. <laughs> okay, yeah, you knew he was going to say that, but still. I 
will say, I'm not sure where that's supposed to be. They're supposed to be like flying through dimensions or, or teleporting. Not 100% sure where this is supposed to be. It's a little indescript so far. I gotta admit, it looks really good compared to, uh, I mean, I, I thought the, uh, the pre-release looked good, but it just looks smooth. Alright. Uh, my head. Check our pods, just to... Someone else got out. Pretend like we haven't played this already. Might be other survivors. Not very barbarian-like voice, but it was the best we could do. We got here, Topaz, all right. Dead. Good. And the jump is also really important in this game. A lot of areas can be accessed by jumping, so you gotta do a lot of looking around. Right here. Org Fang, alchemical agreement, uh, ingredient. Combine three of these to calcinate them into ashes. Silver goblet and gold, take all that. Try to avoid the fire. We don't take These any unnecessary damage, and then we'll walk right through it anyway. Perfect. Off to a great start. We got another chest over. Oh, I'm still getting hurt by it? Okay. And you can see, just because we started as a barbarian, if you look down here where our health is, we've started pretty strong, comparatively. Odd. I feel better. 15, uh, 15 hit points at level 1 is pretty impressive. That'll be our main role. We want to be a frontliner. We want to be a guy that's up front taking a lot of the damage. Uh, let's see. Home ice. Okay, we'll get up this way. We'll go see what we got over here, too. Always Definitely still on the Onyx. We're gonna do we're gonna do some looking around too. We don't we're gonna hoard as many of these items Patience as we can. Project into your mind. A nautiloid hurtling through the plains, resplendent with psionic energy. Okay. Can I attack this? Can't reach destination. Is there anything to attack here? Not really. Not enough space. Okay. Keep moving. Gold, never hurt anybody. We'll jump down because we can heal right away. Not worried about taking any damage. Here goes nothing. And we will continue on. Got a dead goblin here. That wasn't the last time. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. Yeah. Okay, nice little throne. My 
Mind Flayer holding her just A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. Help us. Right. Now this is probably going to go really poorly. If you haven't seen it, this is actually a pretty cool scene, so I won't spoil it, but uh, I don't think we're the, exactly the right class to figure out what we're supposed to be doing Release here. Us. Seems like a good moment to talk. To save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please. Before they return. They return. Uh, we'll say, let's see if it reads it. I don't think it's going to, but. A newborn. Born new oh from this husk. You realize you're talking to an oh. intellect devourer. A minion of the Mind Flayers who abducted you. I don't know how we passed that Arcana check. That's intelligence, and we're really bad at that, so good roll. Uh, all right. We'll say... I think you passed the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Please. And again, this is more about whether you want help through this tutorial part. Um, if you free it... It'll act as a minion, kind of follow you around, do everything uh, to help you. I think we'll be okay. So let's... Well, let's see if we can get him out first, and then we'll attack him for the experience, I think. So we'll go We'll go strength here, see if we can break the skull. We could... Ins let's inspect first. I think we're going to fail at this, too. Again, the difficulty class is the number that you have to either tie or beat to succeed. And we have a minus one, because our intelligence is only an eight. So we need an 11 to get it done. All right. Hot start. is a demon, a swelling of the brain causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. Yeah, I have eight intelligence. I don't think I know what a demon is, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, uh, we, we're definitely not going to do medicine, even though that is a wisdom skill. And we have zero, a plus zero to that. I think we're going to have to go strength here. So let's just see if we can break the skull. DC of 10. Again, we have a plus three because of our stats already. 15. Pretty strong. All right. Another good roll. The brain lifts from the skull, but you notice an opportunity. You could cripple the strange creature, making it more subservient should it prove a threat. I think we're definitely going to have to do that. Uh, so we'll try it again. Dex, we're not bad at it. I think we have a plus one. Yeah, we have a plus one in dexterity. So this will be hard, but we'll try it. Oof. Woof. Finally hit the wall. But again, this is what I was talking about before. It's not always about just succeeding on everything. It's The game is better when you fail things. So don't stress about like restarting every time you get something that doesn't go your way. The story will change based on your successes and your failures. And that's that's the best part of D&D, in my opinion. I don't think that's a great camera angle, but... There we go. I wonder if it knows what we've been trying to do. Guess not. Take a look at this brain jar. They have changed some of this. There was a lot of um, explosives and everything laying around before that people could take and actually kill some of the opponents you weren't supposed to kill by stacking them up in certain ways. Uh, I think they kind of replaced them with some of the brain jars. So you still have the ambiance, but you don't have the way to cheese the beginning encounters to get better stuff than you should have this early. I think that's all in this room. We'll keep going. Very cool. Abomination. 
This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon's wing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. Say, who are you? Who am I? Your only chance of survival. Uh, we need to figure out where we are. We'll say, what do you suggest? First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Lysel is a, is a fighter, so we got a couple frontliners. Again, both of these characters can be pretty good damage dealers. Um, nothing really stacks up to, like, wizards and, and casters. So, we had one of them roll a 20, the other two, or we rolled a couple twos, but still we're going first. I wonder if we had surprise. Let's start with a swing. Alright, and then as we move no on to our but other to keep character. Going. No time this for way, mercy. see what we get. And like I said, both of these characters can be pretty good damage dealers. With this great axe, we're going to deal anywhere between 4 and 15 damage. Uh, because of our strength, you get that extra bonus. You can see... It's hard for me to point at it because I have to keep the mouse hovering over it. But underneath where it says 4 to 15 damage. You can see you roll a d12, so a 12-sided dice, and then you're going to add 3 guaranteed. So, uh, pretty solid damage for melee. As you keep leveling up, you get to the point where you make multiple attacks. Uh, Blazel isn't quite as powerful with a two-handed longsword. She has a 1d10 uh, plus 3. So, she has good strength as well, but hers doesn't have the maximum output that we do. Uh, I think that's going to end our turn. We're not really looking at a lot of... No. Okay, we'll, we'll stand together, I guess. I'm just trying to change my character. Still on my feet. We could rage. We're not going to waste and charge of it, though. Even though we have two of them. We'll end our turn. Let's see what the impestants say. Okay. That didn't look like it missed, but I guess it missed. Uh, we'll give her first crack at it. Alright. Three hits, all pretty you easy. You proved surprisingly adequate in battle. Now, to the helm. Uh, okay, I thought I'd turn those off. If not over, then through. Let's see what we got over here. We're gonna explore again, because we're, we're loot goblins. We want everything that's on the table. Anything we can get, we want to take a look. Okay, it's just something to sit on. Uh, I mean, I like the, um, I like that they put like chairs and everything and not everything is, is necessarily useful but I don't know it doesn't necessarily feel like the most important thing that you have all these different chairs that you get to sit on we'll check the imps again we'll check the dead bodies for stuff healing potions are important we'll give it to Lysel she probably needs it less than we do actually we're not going to worry about the crossbow what's in here uh, yeah scimitar is not going to be as good as what we have so we'll going. Heal even though we don't need it. We'll continue. Ship won't be able to take another dragon attack. We need to get out before it's too late. Robes aren't really helpful. And this is different. There, you know, a lot more detail added from the, uh, the first release of the game. I think it looks great. Like, you can even see everything moving underneath you. I wonder if the netting was designed or whether it's supposed to be damage based. Let's see. Let's go through this thing. Issy, back. Touch nothing without knowing its purpose. Well, here's some of those explosives, like these nautiloid tanks. You hit them, they explode. Yes. If you're looking for some cheese, you can pick as many of these up as you can find, and they can come in pretty handy if you just drop them off by a boss. We have no time for stragglers. That's not true. We got time. Well, there's always time for stragglers. 
Uh, because we're a barbarian, we get a special um, a special kind of option with our uh, with our dialogue. Let's see if we can just pull it off. I, somehow, I don't think this is going to work, but we'll try. When in doubt, the strong option first. We are barbarians, right? This ship right? is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? Uh, don't give up. Let's tear it open. Why not? We could say the pod's stuck fast. I can't free you. We could say I'll go look around. Let's try it again. Why not? Oh, only a 10. That's that's pretty. That's a lot lower than I was expecting. So we need to roll a 7 or higher, and we got there. All right. Honestly, I thought that was going to be like a 20 or something to just rip it off its hinges. I guess we're just built different. White size build doesn't uh, doesn't pull any punches. I also like you didn't catch her. You're just like, oh, I said I'd get you out. I never said I'd, pick, I'd stop you from falling. At last, thought I was done for. We also lost the the illithid brain that was supposed to be following us. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness. Because you have a gith with you. You keep dangerous company. Desperate times, right? Uh, dangerous company is what you need in a fight. Got a problem with the Yankee. Did you feel that just now? We'll, say we'll, we'll go Fair with the dangerous point. company. Looks like there's plenty of fighting ahead. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Uh, <laughs> say, all right, let's get going on Bite Size Bill. We'll, we'll ask, okay, just, again, we'll say, did you feel what I felt before we were just in each other's I heads? I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? I didn't get you out of the box just to not have you help me, so we'll say, Shadow I'm Bite Heart. Size Bill. One moment. Say, so what's that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. Right. I should speak out. Okay. Light flickers in his eyes, but he seems totally unaware of his surroundings. I'll take that. Caught us stealing. Only 11 hit points. We can deal with that. Not us. You must be terminated. They're spending their whole movement, their whole turn to basically run up to us, which is more than okay with us. Um, hmm. We're not really going to rest here. So let's... Sh we could shove to get her the space to move back. We kind of want to do that. We don't want Shadowheart up front. So let's see if we can shove him. Okay, good. Now... Hopefully it doesn't get hit when she does this here. Oh my there we go. Um, in d d you get opportunity attack, so if you are engaged with somebody, Victory or you're close wins. to somebody, they can uh, hit you to try running away from them. Swift and lethal. Again, we'll save as many of our Cutting resources. The chase. Right now, because we're not really going to rest. Uh, and then we'll just move Bill in front, because that's his job, to take What's the hits for everybody. Uh, she has technically still her action, so let's use... We'll go with sick. We'll go with Firebolt. Firebolt is a cantrip. It doesn't use any of your spells, which is important. You, we're trying to save our resources. You can cast as many cantrips as you want without really worrying about it. I guess it's skip. Oh, no. She still has a bonus action. So, uh, you get an action in D&D. You get a bonus action where you can do some minor stuff like shoving, like we just saw. You can jump with a bonus action. Um, like second wind for her because she's a fighter. Get, lets her use her bonus action to regain some health. Uh, we're gonna hold off on that. Good miss. Same deal, we'll go with another cantrip. Three. Eight is about as good as you can do with that, which is good. Then we'll see if Bill can finish off this time. Despite. There we go. We are definitely stealing this. Let's pick it up. We will worry about that later. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a Gith Yankee warrior and centuries of darkness. We'll head over this way just, uh, 
because we're going to get the gold key. That is for our chest. Very well. Let's see if we can use those two on it. Key infected. Uh, keychain. Oh, I put it in the chest. That was what we're trying to do. Yeah, there it is. Use the gold key to open it. All right. We'll just take all this out and we will drop the chest so we're not carrying as much heavy, as much weight. All right. Dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. No traps, please. Healing. Take whatever this is. Just Another because. Brain. Again, we're gonna be loot goblins. We're gonna take all of this. A rune, but for what? They said, don't play with As you stuff, place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. Exactly. Uh, that's what's supposed to happen when you have a Mind Flayer tadpole in your head. Um, it'd be a pretty short story if it happened to us, so I still don't know why that is, which is kind of cool. Mind Flayer stares at you. Let's see if we, we kill this can thing. Dazed. No. Can we attack the pod? Will it let me? Don't bother. You're barely dented. All right. They're telling me to shut up and keep moving. So that's what we'll do. Bill is a good one to use. Like, if we wanted to, we could either split the characters up or we could change who's walking up front. White sized Bill is a good one just because of the health we have. Uh, if we want someone to take the hit, it's probably him. And the main thing with Barbarian is we can rage when it's our turn. We can do that with, as a bonus action. Um, you get a certain number per long rest that you can use. And when you're raging, you only take half damage on standard style. Once damage. inside, do as I say. So slashing, bludgeoning, all the rest of it. I'll trust my own judgment. Kane Yank. I'll give it a shot. A lot of teamwork already. Things are off to a great start. Find all those explosives, you drop it off right here. Uh, if you can kill Zalk and get that sword, it's a pretty big advantage, especially in the early game. But uh, again, we're not really trying to get too cheesy here. We're not trying to break anything that we don't have to. Let's start Taste by attacking here. Let's see if she can kill him. Uh, that'll do. Again, you can only use your second wind once for short rest, so we'll skip. Obviously, it's not hurt, so we need to do it. This time we'll use Sacred Flame instead, because uh, the, the main difference between Sacred Flame and uh, Firebolt, even though they're both cantrips, this, with, uh, with Firebolt, you actually roll an attack, so you have to use a roll. The Sacred Flame actually causes them to make a save, which means they roll a dice and use their stats to see if it hits them or not. It works out the same, because this guy's stats work out the same, uh, but we'll use Sacred Flame just because forward, I guess. Not really worried about that. We did the turn here. Two here. There we go. This is actually a good time to rage, so we're going to do that. I should have done that beforehand, because it gives you a little more damage. Worked out. Alright. And if we're 
going to keep raging, we need to be hit, so we're going to move him forward. I actually don't think we need to be hit, I think we need to be attacked. Rage ends early if the Barbarian hasn't attacked an enemy or taken damage since their last turn. Okay, so we might have thrown a rage away there. Not great, but it'll be okay. We use our ranged attack here. We have a bow. That'll do it for Lysel. Have to keep going. We have a 65% chance to hit with that and 80% for Firebolt. We use Firebolt. Deals with him. He's good. Never a dull moment. Okay. Don't think there's a whole lot we're going to be able to do because we're not going to be able to make it to the hit him. And move. We don't have any ranged uh, attacks. So we'll just dash. We'll probably use our. Anything to throw? We'll throw this just. Let's do it just to attack. Not the end of the world. Because we attack, we should keep our rage. We must take the transponder. Just out of range. Sometimes the only way out is through. Uh, we'll dash, which basically lets you double your movement. Take all this off them too. Might as well since we're here. What path lies before me? It's clear. Hurry! Before they strike! We got a couple more up here. We don't have an action because we dashed, so we're actually going to try to stay back a little bit to stay out of their range. Uh, yeah, we'll dash again. We want her to stay behind the barbarian because we want the barbarian hit. No time left. I must reach the hell. Definitely looks like he's winning that. So we. Leave them to it. Use our bow here. Another kill for us. She's on fire already. We're doing pretty well. Uh, so we have 12 turns to reach the transponder, which is right here. I don't think we're going to be able to help enough to turn that fight. Just keep moving towards it. Moving. Shadow heart forward. Firebolt and miss. miss, not a big deal. Won't give in. Very Are you gonna well. dash forward again with the barbarian? Let him take the shot. Three's not a big deal. He probably won't be able to kill us either. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm. All right, Lysel, can she get back with her sword? Can she make it? You bow. She hit the hell for which is good. <laughs> Another kill for her. She is just, she's rolling well right now. Uh, and that's one thing about the game. Like, sometimes everything can be going right, you roll it really well, and then sometimes the dice just don't cooperate, oh and way. things get a little more difficult. So, we'll see how long our good luck keeps going. <laughs> That Nothing turn. important is ever easy. Another step forward. Dash to the transponder. I think that'll let us end it. Yes. Okay. The Helm's alien transponder. You've made it in time. Twelve turns was a lot for that. I mean, I imagine it's there if you do want to try to kill us all. Um, might not be impossible if you had some good rolls and if we stack those explosives like we talked about, but it's not going to be easy.
squid appearing out of nowhere. I hate when that happens. Giant flying squid. Pretty good physics, too. You saw, like, his beard was hanging upside down there, too. I like that. I just love how much effort has gone into this game. Like, you can tell, like, even the little things they've polished and uh, put a lot of thought into. Eventually, we're probably going to try to swap this great axe out with a As great you sword. Wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. And that'll just bump our minimum damage up by one. The greatsword is probably a little bit better, but, you know, at this point, we'll uh, check ourselves for injuries. Other than the infection, you're more or less intact. A miracle, given everything you've been through. But it'll all be for nothing if you don't find help soon. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. Because this is such a high fantasy setting, um, and they have spells that can bring people back to life and everything like that, really the easiest way for you to do that would be to just have somebody kill you, take the tadpole out, and then bring you back to life. Um, obviously, uh, we don't have the scrolls of revive. Oh, we do have a scroll of revivify. So that would probably be the easiest way to deal with the tadpoles if this was, uh, you know, it kind of ruins the story a little bit. But you know. I, it certainly would be an option if you were thinking about it and playing an actual D&D campaign. Uh, you'd say, why couldn't we just do this if we had these scrolls of Revivify? And it would be up to your DM to decide if it's uh, allowed or not. What's up for discussion? Should we be more honest or should we go for our artifact? Let's just wake her up. We'll be, we'll be the good guy this playthrough, I think. Or at least as good of a guy as a rage-induced mm. barbarian can. You're alive. I'm alive. How is this possible? Mm, we'll say I was hoping you might know that. I remember the ship. I remember falling. The nothing. Mm. Do you have any idea where we are? No. I don't recognize this place. But anything's an improvement on where we just came from. First things first. We need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a heat. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. Uh, we'll say, what happened to our guest friend? You might want to reconsider calling her a friend. Looks like she ran off without us. Right, so I, I'd better get moving. Fair enough. We'll say I, you want to stay together. I take it. Well, we need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. All right, we'll get moving. One thing, just before we go, I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. No compliment for these Lead massive the guns that just ripped the, the walls apart of your uh, of your cage? Okay, that's fine. Bite sized Bill will remember that, though. I'm just gonna keep looking around a little bit. Uh, see what we can start give for starting supplies. One thing they did compared to like the beginning of when the game released to like further into development is they made it where if you want to take a long rest. Uh, which is where you get all of your skills back, you need to have a certain amount of food to do it. Which is good. Um, before, you could just long rest whenever you wanted. It kind of broke the game a little bit. Look. Especially if you have a, a Mind Flare tadpole in your head, and there's no... Uh, let's read it. Let's see our perfume letter here. It says, Sai, I love you. There, I said it. And if you meet me tomorrow, I'll say it again and again, and keep saying it until we're old and gray. Let's do it. Let's go to Baldur's Gate. I know it's risky. But so staying here. The last few months have been hard, but they're always a little easier when you're there. Leave your boat and meet me at the hill overlooking the old bridge. Bring whatever you can carry. We'll make it. We'll make do without the rest. Don't be late. Love, Anna. Okay, so we'll take that. Um, but yeah, long resting without any real need or anything that can stop you. 
uh, super overpowered and not very realistic when you Something think good about here. how Fresh water. you have a parasite growing in your head along the way. Nearby. The closer you are to turning into a mind flare. Okay, these are books. You probably won't read every book. There is a lot to go over. Uh, just for the sake of time, I'll probably glance over everything that I don't think is super important. Alright. A rope. Not sure if that's going to help us. Tongs as well, I guess. We'll take them. Weight's not really a problem yet, so... Definitely want fish. The bottle and the mug, not really. We will continue on. I'm likely to miss some things. I do remember there are buried chests that your character needs to find using their perception. Um, I remember where some of them are, but if we don't find them, I'm not going to dig them up. You can, and if you play the game and decide that that's the way you want to play, I'm sure there'll be tons of guides telling you where they all exactly are, but I'm going to try to stick to the lore and stick to how the game and the dice shake out. Let's see what this does. Might get that open easily. Maybe there's another entrance. We could try to lockpick it. Um, I don't think going in there right now is a great idea, having played it before. So we'll continue on. I know I'm trying to avoid metagaming, but I'm not really trying to have a game over this early either. So keep checking these dead fishermen. More of those wretched things. We actually don't have a good option for range here, hmm. other than Shadow, Shadow Arc's magic. So let's see if we can get a surprise attack by having her launch one of these first. Probably should have had her crouch to sneak, but all right, worked out. Positioning is important for the high ground. Range attacks from above are a little more likely to hit, while range attacks from below are, uh, hit less often. Good to know. Better right. stay back. One strike could be lethal. I think we'll be okay. And again, we're just going to kind of interpose our barbarian in between Shadowheart and the rest of them. We still have two more that we're dealing with, but I only see one in the initial oh, there's the second one. Okay. Do we waste a spell here? I say waste, do we use a spell here? Because inflict wounds, you can see, really powerful. Um, 3 to 30 damage, you roll 3d10, and then take whatever you can get. You have to be in melee range, so we're going to have to move her up and do it. I think we're actually going to do it. How much health does he have? Well, he only has 10 health left, so... Shield of Faith, not the greatest spell. It's not bad, it's, the problem with it is it's concentration, uh, which again, I can't really point with a mouse because I'll lose it, but if you look right underneath where it says under long rest, um, concentration is, uh, you can only concentrate on one spell at a time, so you have to keep your focus and you can lose it when you're hit, so it's important, I'm not going to use melee though, uh, it's important to... what I was going to say, but it's important to uh, pick pick and choose your spots for concentration spells. I don't think we need to... Rage. We did get, a, we did get a, like a rest, like we've been sleeping, but I think we're doing well enough that we don't need to worry about a rage too much. And let's shove this guy back. Alright, just to make a little bit of space, and hopefully he has to spend a lot of his turn rushing up to us. If he's out of range, maybe we can get away from where he can hit us. Oh, that's okay missed anyway, so let's see how well she does with the mace. Not bad. And then we're going to jump out of the way and take the high ground just in case we need it. I think we're okay, but center moving. Uh, we'll just go with another main hand. You fight well. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Not bad for, uh, that's a nice no-hit combat there. Worked out for us. This is some sort of, uh, Used for an elixir of psychic resistance. Swift as my feet can carry me. Silver locket. More stratish. We don't really need a rapier, but continue on. Didn't need to do that. that was a misclick. Okay. Still alive. And we actually leveled so up, so let's level up quick. As soon as we get out of the uh, fire that. Bill just decided he had to set off. Okay. We're done. Got a long road ahead. All right. So leveling up, it's really easy to click through this. I've done that a few times in my last playthroughs, so we'll have to just be careful on what we do. Health increase. Um, normally, you'd roll a dice for this. So 
I guess they have some sort of standard for it. We get a reckless attack, which grants us advantage on attack, but grants everything that attacks us. Uh, it gives them advantage, too, for the next turn. This works really well when you're raging. You want to be raging and then get give yourself advantage because it doesn't really matter as much if they hit you when you're raging. It's um, uh, because they do half damage anyway. So this can be a good way to make sure when you need to have a solid hit or you need to have solid hits, it's a good way to do it. Danger sense. Uh, you have advantage on dexterity saving throws against traps, spells, and services. Very important. Dexterity is a great save. We don't really have to pick anything, I don't think. Uh, you can multi-class up here if you choose to. So when it says add a class, you can do that. We're actually going to save Barbarian for now. I uh, actually think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's level Shadowheart 2. So she gains an extra spell slot right here. So you gain an extra first level spell slot. She has turn undead as an action, which can force zombies and everything, and low level undead to like have to run away from you. And she gets invoked duplicity because of her background to basically create a fake version of herself. Um, yeah, there must be some sort of just, you know, standard leveling procedure for health. Because she also got a decent number of points. She has 14 on the con, which is good, but still. Uh, are we picking spells for her? Does she get any spells? I don't think she does. Civilian militia passive feature. You have weapon efficiency. Okay. Dark vision because she's a half elf. You can tell because she kind of has like the shorter pointy ears. Uh, all right. I don't think we're picking spells, so we'll just continue. The good thing about clerics, you can change your spells whenever you want at a, at a log rest. Uh, all right. What's inside? Let's go check our dead mind flare friend up here and see what's in the chest. If we needed to, we can take a short rest to heal. We're just gonna keep. Wow, pushing on for now. Oil of accuracy. Coat your weapon to receive a plus two bonus to attack rolls with an oiled weapon. Okay. Same deal. We'll probably give that away when we get other characters because reckless attack gives you advantage. Uh, you can basically guarantee a hit, though. That plus two to hit is pretty powerful when you consider gaining advantage. Um, and if you're not familiar with the rules, what it, the way advantage works is you roll two dice instead of one, and you get to pick the higher of the two. Uh, this is not the way we do it, right? Good. Just looking for some extra stuff. Doesn't look like there's a lot of it around. Take the thieves tool. Is loot really handy? No, but we'll, okay, we'll take it. Alright, um... Shadowheart and I have the same Wonder dexterity. What's past this. Let's see if we can pick the lock. Only a, only a difficulty of five. We have a plus one to dex. Shouldn't be too hard to get in here. Alright. Not bad. Let's see, what do we got? Just a little bit of gold and a leather helmet. Plus one dexterity to dexterity saving throws. Uh, we'll give it to Shadowheart. My face protects me. I think I have it on my other character. Can't give up now. So let's give our leather helmet to her. What's next? She'll put it on. She looks goofy wearing it, but you know, can't turn away the stats. So, unfortunately, we're gonna go with it. Look at this. Okay, I guess if you have to wear it, she looks no kind of silly. But uh, let's let's send Bill first. Move. Since he's our deep. main character, so to speak. We'll send him down here. I do remember there's actually a chest over here on the far side. Hmm. All right. Didn't realize we just walked across there. Uh, let's see if we can pick it up with our perception. Doesn't look like. Oh. Nice view. Uh, it's a nature check this time. Okay, so. I need some help. Because we didn't see it, we're going to keep moving. Again, we're not really trying to cheese it too much. If I do get another character here in a second, like I'm expecting I will, uh, maybe we'll bring him back over here and see if he sees it. But if we keep failing the rolls, we're not gonna just, you know, keep trying to cheese it, I don't think. Seems like a good moment to talk. 
Hurry! I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? Hmm. We'll say, kill it yourself. You look capable enough. I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. Uh, we'll go dexterity here. Let's see if we can roll away from here. Oof. Not this time. And again, don't worry too much about me. It just changes the story. Shh. Not a word. Let's try to keep that lovely neck of yours in one piece. Hmm? And you. Keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. I need him alive. Stow that blade or I'll show you just how messy things can get. Yeah, the leather cap's not really doing <laughs> Promises, really promises. But I have other business, I'm afraid. <laughs> now, I saw you on the ship. Didn't I? Nod. Uh, do we attack him? Hmm. -mm. Let's, that's what a barbarian would do, so let's do it. Difficulty 14. We do have a plus 3 as well as a plus 2 for the hit. There we go. Alright. With our bonuses, we're gonna get there. You son of a- Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <laughs> what was that? What's going on? Uh, we'll say it's the Mind Flare Worm. It's connected us. The worm? Of course. That explains things somewhat. And to think. I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, we'll say... Uh, apology... Uh, we'll say apology accepted. I might have done the same if the roles were reversed. <laughs> A kindred spirit. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Uh, we will introduce ourselves. We are also Bal Baldarian. Is that so? We clearly move in different circles. So... Do you know anything about these worms? It's kind of funny looking up at everybody. You know, it, like, because we're a halfling character, almost all the camera angles were looking up, which I like. I, they, they did a good job of putting that in there. Uh, we'll say, yes, unfortunately, they'll turn us into mind flares. Or we'll say, I know we don't want them in our heads. We'll go with no. that. Eight intelligence. Of that much, we can be certain. These worms are already affecting me. I can feel it. Now... What to do about it? Hmm. We can start by traveling together. Better odds, I'd say. Or we, we'll ask what the plan is first. Say, well, and what's your plan? getting out of here for a start. Then finding anyone who knows about these worms. I need an expert. Someone who knows how to control these things. Hmm. We'll say control them. I want them gone. Well, yes, of course. But first things first. Uh, we'll say, and I need company for the road, why not come with me? You know, I was ready to go this alone. But maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. All right. I accept. Lead on. It gives Asterion the same uh, experience as us, which is good. We don't have to worry about him catching up or anything. Uh, so he gets cunning actions at level 2, which let him use his bonus action to do things like hide, to dash, and to disengage. Can be pretty, ha pretty handy for a, uh, for a rogue, so pretty good. We will press on. Um, I said I was going to go back for the nature thing. I think we're going to let it be. 
again, we're not trying to cheat the game in any way. We're not trying to yeah. be the power gamers that have to unlock yeah. everything. We didn't find it, so I think it's that fair to keep saying we didn't find it. Dangerous, even if injured. Best be careful. Okay. Uh, Watch your back. Let's have a Starian talk. A little small talk. Because we are off. the dying monster. This is the thing that abducted you. You could end its life here and now, if only you didn't feel compassion. Compassion. Uh, we'll say... No, you shouldn't. You, you should be furious, shouldn't you? Yes, you feel hate. And you deserve to be punished for it. You should be whipped, made to bow before this creature in shame. It's possessing your mind, forcing you to love it. But then the feeling slips. The creature's mind seems to focus elsewhere. Uh, we'll concentrate on this thought. I do know that there is a, um, a path, at least, and there has been, uh, where you can just get a game over if you do this wrong. So we'll have to be careful here. I failed on that as well, which is not good. You try to break through, but its mind is impenetrable. With a last surge of defiance, it slaps your efforts away. The monster lies exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet orange pearls, radiate malice. Ah, uh, we'll close the eyes forever. Don't need any more mind flayers walking around. We're not going to give them the chance to heal up or do anything. Monster! Death is too good for it. Let's see. I don't know if there's anything else over here, but we'll take a quick look. What really looks like it. Let's see if I can jump through the fire here instead of walking through it. So we're not trying to take any extra damage if we don't have to. See if they follow me. Good. Good. All right, everybody jump through it. I didn't have to tell them to do it, which is awesome. Crush spike trap, huh? Okay. Continue on. I hear shouting up ahead. We should check it out, but be careful. Gate. Nobody gets in! Zevlor's orders! That pack of goblins will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! <sighs> Not sure why you needed to pluck the arrow out of the shield then, but it would look cool. The nine hells! Open the gates! See how this goes when we only have three characters. <laughs> Probably should have kept looking around a little bit before. Okay. Damnable roach! Provoke the blade and suffer its sting. All right, so we got a stereo close to the front. Everybody else is towards the end of order, so most of everything else is going to happen before we get to go. I think we should try to hide here. See if we can get a sneak attack on any of them. Uh, okay, he, she moved, which is good. Thought we were down one already. Let's see if we can hide and get up top there. Uh, and again, we get to hide as a bonus action. Mm, uh, why did it take us a... Because I clicked the wrong thing. Okay. In that case, we will stand here and do nothing, because I clicked the regular hide instead of the cunning action hide, which is... I don't really feel like it should have a regular action hide. Like, I 
guess I guess there might come a scenario where you need to uh, use your action to do it, but still. Uh, we'll just have him sneak around here and see if he can deal with that goblin next time. I'll bleed every last one of you! <laughs> <laughs> Raise sickness for 10. Bill is not in great shape right now. And our rage wouldn't have helped with that. It only does slashing, piercing, and, uh, and uh, bludgeoning damage. So it wouldn't have helped with a spell. Barely made it to that one. Bill is all but dead at this point. Right. Let's have Shad see if we can have Shadowheart jump up here. And if we can, we're gonna use a leveled spell. Deal with it. We're gonna use a flick of these. Percent. Not as good as I was hoping, but. Missed. Okay. That's gonna do it for her. We'll use her action and her bonus action. Should rage. And I think we have to take a. Well. Hmm. Different. We're gonna use a potion healing. No choice there. This is not enough movement to hit him, but we can get up here. Blood follows me everywhere. Good kill. My sickle and sword! Strike them down! Uh, got a Sterion sneaking up on everybody. You can cunning ash action dash to reach this guy. I think that's what we're going to do. But again, that uses our bonus action because we are a rogue. He has advantage because he's hidden. Good bit of damage. He should get his sneak attack, which does a bunch of extra damage. Yeah. Heal extra damage to a foe if you have advantage against them. Uh, which is good. That'll probably end his turn. I think our friends at the gate are doing well enough. We're not too worried about it. Priest just tries to trip you. You have to be careful because you light it on fire as well. Oh. Still doing okay. I'd like to come in here and help him. Yeah, Phil's not doing fantastic. So. Alright, Shadow Arts turn. Spend a cure wounds on this. I don't know. I think we're gonna use a healing word instead because that's a bonus action. Cure wounds heals four to eleven, and you have to use your action for it. Healing word is four to seven. You have to, eat, but you can use your bonus. Action. So we'll use healing word. Heal as much as we can. And then we are going to firebolt. Stand in my way. Definitely raging. Uh, he only has nine, but we're still gonna reckless attack, I think. Uh, we're not because we can't hit him through the grease. So in that case, let's see if we can just move over here and then make that attack hit. We have a 96% because the advantage is awesome. Good kill. We'll move forward a little bit. And that'll do it. I think we only have a couple of them left. We have the war. We got the two up here, and that's it. Now, Mysterion is up here. Even though we have to step into Greece. Let's take our bonus action to a high. They won't know 
a bit. Let's see if we can attack to kill the war. Bugbear's almost dead. Let's see if we can steal that kill. Why not? There it is. Just enough to. Uh, that'll end his turn. <laughs> Heart's turn. She's gonna jump over here. Just because it's probably a little cheaper than moving. We'll firebolt again because we only have the one spell slot left. We want to save it. Uh, let's see if we can kill the more. Right. Unfortunately, I don't think time to push my luck again. Is gonna have this. The uh, building. It's one day I'll catch a break. Dash, just so range. I don't think it's gonna come to that. This guy's almost dead, so they'll probably finish him here in the next turn or two. There it is. That was the last of them. Inside, all of you. More may follow. Open the gate. We are definitely Good. going through all this. We're taking all Damn this. Damn You. Gold. Nothing else is really that great. Check anything the other goblins to see if they have anything. There's probably not a whole lot. Take a bottle. Coin. Keep going. Now we're not doing particularly well right What's now. Next? We might I take a rest. Not. Shadowheart only having the one spell is kind of a problem because she has Inflict Wounds, which is kind of her big damage dealer, and then she has her two healing spells, all of which are leveled spells. Keep going. We only can use one of those. Uh, there's a lot of story that takes place in there too, so we'll come back to that. Let me keep walking around for a little bit. Also, we're hitting entrance here. Let's walk by, see if we see it. These tracks, scored, bow-legged, goblins, I'd say. Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, I don't think this is the way we're supposed to be going either. People up ahead. Something's wrong. Maybe we will go into the druid camp. Fortunately, it's going to take a second to walk over there. Let's see what we have here. Forget about these goblins, so we're just gonna pick everything up. Nothing <laughs> really. We'll go in, we'll see if we can uh, get Will as a companion, I suppose. And we'll worry about Shadowheart the rest of them later. One crisis after another. Oh, there we go. I guess the door was just down and I couldn't see it. Children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too. Unbelievable! Uh, well, there's one goblin. There's ten. Oh, I'm leaving before the horde shows up. Uh, let's switch people. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Can't slow down. Let's see if we can switch to our main characters. We have this conversation. I don't know that you can. I think we have to be Shadowheart to talk to them, which is unfortunate. Um, we'll say one fight just ended, now you're picking another, relax. Tell that to the dead at the gate. Shut it, horns! I'd be lying dead next to the goblins if you'd stalled any longer. My duty is to this camp. Oh, God forbid you risk your precious tail. 
But I shouldn't be surprised. Foul bloods ain't known for courage. You see the tiefling's jaw clench. He's about to erupt. Uh, I think Shadowheart would stand back and watch, so that's what we'll do. With a thunk, the armored man collapses, unconscious. Enough. The goblins have found us. No doubt the beasts will be back. We need to pack up and leave. Immediately! For once. Let's see if we can pick him back up. First, I damn near die at the hands of goblins. Then, a foul blood takes his frustrations out on me. I'm done with this hellhole. Those two oh, must have history. history. Wow. Okay. I haven't Never seen mind that before. Let's look for help. Very good. I should speak up. Now that's settled. Thank you for your help out there. I'm Zevlor. I'm White Size Bill. Well met. I should warn you, visitors are no longer welcome in this grove. Whatever your business, I'd see to it quickly. The druids of this attack will only strengthen their resolve. Uh, we'll say... Those goblins, have there been many attacks like that? There have been several attacks by different monsters. The druids blame us outsiders for drawing them here. Nobody's welcome anymore. They've started a ritual to cut the grove off from the world outside. We can't stay, but we'll be slaughtered if we leave. We're no fighters. Hmm. This ritual, is there any... Is there no way to convince the druids to stop it? I've tried. Korga, their new first druid, won't even see me. You, though... I know it's not your business, but she owes you for saving this place. Perhaps you could persuade her for more time to prepare, if nothing else. Uh, we'll say I see what I can do. But first we'll say I have my own temporal concerns, which is time-based. I need a healer. Goblin got you. The druid Halsin's a renowned healer, but he didn't make it back from Aradin's expedition. If it's not too serious, you could try his apprentice, Nettie. She's with the other druids in the inner grove. They've withdrawn there to prepare this damn ritual of theirs. Uh, I'll find her and I'll speak to Kaga while I'm there. Really? We're messengers now? We'd owe you a great debt. If we're forced to leave now, we won't make it to the city. You'll find the druids at the heart of the grove. Please. Make them see sense before more lives are lost. Have to keep going. We will see if we can get uh, Can't keep the bill here because again, having a charisma-based character like this a is warlock, about your precious Baldur's Gate. Probably Gates. gonna be. I you know, care about our lives, our futures. No, you just care about your stupid apprenticeship. Take that back. Hells, we can't just leave. They're kin. I'll not gamble our lives, our futures, on people who are as good as dead. We must leave for Baldur's Gate at once. Can we all just take a moment, please? What's the point in blades and spells if we don't bloody use them? We should stay. These people aren't fighters. We can help. Or yell louder. That's fine too. Hmm. Only cowards run from a fight, barbarian. Yeah, let's do it. How dare! Prove him wrong, then, if you think you're able to, that is. Zerk! Fine. We'll stay. If we survive, it'll make for a good story, I suppose. Thank you, Roland. I was expecting to roll with that, but that's I okay. Until Roland shows off his thunder wave. Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. I can't do it. I'm not like you. Umi, I don't need you to be like me. You just have to buy enough time to run. Come on. 
I believe in you. You can do this. Mm. Say it's good advice, child. You'll do well to listen. Hmm. You're on the right path, Umi. Go on now. Practice what you've learned. Well met. The Blade of Frontiers at your... The man's smile bends downward. And his thoughts become yours. You are the Blade of Frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held. <sighs> Hell's great fires. You are on the ship. Uh, we'll say yes, and we both carry parasites. Actually, let's ask him about his background. Who's that woman? The one in your thoughts. You saw her then. Advocatus Diaboli. Her name is Karlak. An archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship. But the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now. Preying on the innocent. I don't kill her. She'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. I'm not gonna ask to help fight that, but we'll say you have a, uh, a mind flare tadpole in your head. Doesn't that worry you? I'd be a fool if it didn't. I know the stories. Doomed to shed my skin, become a lithid, and there's no coming back. But I haven't sprouted any tentacles. Least not yet, thank Balderin. Could just be good luck. But sooner or later, it's bound to run out. Uh, well, join me then. We'll search for a cure. <laughs> I like your thinking. Besides, I watched you fight at the gate. I could use an ally like you, ready when you are. Hmm. The famous Blade of Frontiers in the flesh. Clever, this hero act you've got going. Hero, Blade. Name strangers gave me. My friends call me Will. Excellent. If we ever become friends, I'll know what to call you. Oh my. <laughs> this is going to be a fun journey. Okay. Let's level Will up really quick. Catch him up with everybody. So he gets another spell slot. He gains a spell. Let's see, what are we going to take for that? Uh, it would help to know what he has already. We get to replace one here in a second. Let's, let's start with that, actually. So we have Arms of Hadar and Armor of Agathus. Armor of Agathus is decent because it gives you temporary hit points, and when they come up to hit you, they take damage as well. So that's not a bad one. The problem with a Warlock, though, is you only get a couple spell slots. They come back really easily, but you only get a couple for each fight. So you really need to make sure every spell you cast, or at least every leveled spell you cast, is worth it. Uh, hmm. All right, let's take a look at our spells before we decide what goes out. Charm person could be good. We don't really have a utility caster yet. But again, if you only get one or two spells, do you really want to spend it on charm person? Probably not. Expeditious retreat lets you move faster. Um, Hellish rebuke is a, um, a decent spell, I should say. So you do 2d10 fire damage, and I guess they burn too. It says delayed. Um, so react to your next attacker with flames that deal 2d20 fire damage. Hex is kind of a go-to for a Warlock, but we're not really a Hex Blade Warlock, I don't think. I mean, we could make it one, I suppose. Witch Bolt's not a good spell. Um, and Command, again, a little bit useful, but you don't want to use it. You want a wizard or a sorcerer that has a ton of spell slots to use stuff like commands. So we'll pass on that. Hmm. Let's do Burning Hands, I think. We'll just go damage. We'll go burning hands. Let's do Hellish Rebuke, actually. Since we're only going to have a few of them, we'll use Hellish Rebuke. We'll get to pick a couple of these invocations uh, that should help us out. Agonizing Blast. Uh, not super helpful. It does a couple extra points of damage. Good early, but it stops being good. Armor of Shadows. Uh, you cast Mage Armor on yourself at will without expending a spell slot. It's not terrible. Um, it's not great either. What's his dexterity? Only a plus one. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that would give him a 14 armor class, which is not really that high. Uh, beast Speech. Guiling Influence. Devil Sight. You can, normally see, or you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical. Okay. Fiendish Vigor. Uh, false Life grants you 7 temporary hit points. Cast False Life on yourself at will at level 1 as a level 1 spell without expending a spell slot. Seven extra hit points isn't really that valuable. Mask of many faces. You can disguise yourself at will without expending a spell slot. That could actually be pretty good. I don't know how well it's going to work in a game like this, but in actual D&D, &D, that's pretty good. Uh, you learn how to cast one with shadows. Propelling blast. Blast people backwards with Eldritch Blast. Thief of five fates. Once per long rest, you can cast Bane using a Warlock spell slot. That's, again, not good. Casting Bane with a spell slot is just too costly. Bane's up to three targets. Yeah, it's just too much. You only get, like, two spells, basically, until you're level eight or ten or something like that as a warlock, so... It's just not very good. Um, I guess we'll do Agonizing Blast and Mask of Many Faces. Okay. Thanks for watching my playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Follow it along with Bite Size Bill. Uh, if you like what you saw, like, share, comment, all that stuff. It helps me out a ton. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, to keep up with the rest of this campaign turn the bell on all that stuff you know how YouTube works so if you like what you saw and you want to help me out doing any or all of that stuff helps me out a ton and I would really appreciate it uh, if you like D&D &D, whether this is your first uh, kind of introduction whether Baldur's Gate is really like the first foray into it or whether you've been around for a long time and you know everything about the game if you like that kind of stuff uh, in the description, there's a link to a new channel that I'm starting right now that is going to talk about all that stuff and more for the for tabletop games. So if you want to get more involved with that, it's a great place to do it, and it would help me out a lot too. Uh, thanks a lot. As always, I'm Jake, and I'll catch you guys next time.